I want to first start with a simple mental exercise because um, if if we can turn off all the sound bites and just look at this panel, you know, the, the picture of this panel up here and pretend we don't know the topic of discussion here, um, what would most people think this panel is talking about? You, you might think this is a panel about education, about family issues, about alleviating poverty, or maybe even about the environment or health care. Um, but I think very few people, I mean, it's all logical to think about these areas of concern for women, but fewer people would imagine this image of a panel to be talking about uh, hard power and security issues. Uh, we wouldn't be talking about <coughs> trying to avert a nuclear disaster or trying to fight terrorism with a panel that looks like this. But I think it's very important and it's a positive step that uh, this particular dialogue is devoting a session or two to the role of women and I think it's a good beginning and I also have uh, a, a belief that eventually the concept of gender mainstreaming will reach uh, national security and foreign policy areas. Um, but I want to say that still, uh, for centuries, diplomacy has been a highly gendered man's job because it implies an outward social uh, skills and the ability to travel distant lands um, and sometimes unknown lands too. Uh, it also uh, requires a demonstration of national power and strength. And uh, security, especially as it is linked to military uh, position, has even been much has been so much more uh, exclusive of uh, women's participation historically. And this crosses all different cultural boundaries. And I think it's uh, something that we can all agree on. Um, and international relations have highlighted characteristics of independence, strength, aggression, and the willingness to use force. And these are not characteristics traditionally associated with the female gender. And that is perhaps a reason these stereotypes and prejudices um, that exist in international relations, why women have been so much excluded over centuries. Um, but of course, recently, we have seen some changes. You know, around the world, we are seeing more women as heads of states, as ministers, ambassadors, as parliamentarians. This is certainly a change. Even in my own country of Taiwan, we just last year we elected a woman president and commander in chief. And uh, in parliament, we are nearly 40% uh, women representation. And uh, I think this is, it has been difficult, especially in the Asian context, for a woman to reach political prominence, uh, especially if she is not from a family of blood relations to a previous political, a male leader who had already established political prominence. And uh, so I believe we've come a long way and we've broken many glass ceilings around the world, not only in my country, but in many places around the world. And certainly there are more, more role models uh, to inspire many more younger people of, diff of new generations. But um, as I said, things are changing. I think still it's really not enough. Um, and um, as we are growing more accustomed to seeing women's faces in leadership roles, uh, at the same time, we have to ask, does it make a difference for women on other levels um, in the roles that they also play in international relations? Because it's not just a proactive role. In many, uh, in many circumstances, women are victims. They are victims of violence. They are migrant workers with specific gender-related issues. Um, they also could be um, uh, victims of economic mismanagement. Uh, so there are many roles of women in the international system. Women are also consumers. They are also creators of, of technologies or innovations uh, in how to improve uh, the distribution of resources in the global setting. And so I think it, uh, in addition to having more women in top leadership positions, we need more women on all levels of international involvement. And sometimes it is useful to include those women uh, who are not necessarily leaders, but they have very valid experiences uh, of what social or what human security actually means. But I, I want to add a third point, and that is uh, as we've been also addressing uh, what the role of men should be, could, could possibly be in improving the status of women uh, in international uh, foreign policy and security policy, and that is, you know, 
I think our goal is not just to have women in these positions, but feminists. And I talk about feminists as also in the context of men who can also be feminists. And I refer to fem feminism as implying a willingness to challenge uh, structures of power or systems of power. And the current state of international relations, or, ha or the way it has been in decades, is that uh, international relations are based on the interaction of nation states. And the strength of nation states, as we heard in the earlier presentation uh, by Prime Minister Netanyahu, is number one, military, number two, economics. Um, and that is what we traditionally see as hard power. But I want to say that in a changing society, especially if we are willing to deconstruct the existing power structures, we have to add other dimensions of power. And these might include what we commonly know as soft power or other values, um, other roles of women and contributions that non-state actors can make in the international system. And so this conference in general, not just this session, I know has a theme about disruption. And uh, I, I know it's not realistic to expect the international system um, as it is at the moment, a nation state based system that still focuses on military and economic strength. It's not realistic to expect a full deconstruction of that and we're not after all revolutionaries, but I think we, what we can do is to expect a gradual increase of other dimensions in the international system and a strengthened role for uh, non-state actors uh, and the spirit of inclusiveness and universality. Um, because I believe uh, there are many more opportunities, especially with the democratization of information and the tools available for disseminating information uh, the universality of education, et cetera, that provide many more women and those who are not necessarily uh, in the nation state based international system to take part in the international system. And so I want to end there with these three points. That is, yes, we have women in leadership positions. They are in national security positions, but there's simply not enough. And um, I think we can all recognize that, um, w you know, if, if you take the gender equality index that exists, a UNDP indication or index with some other global peace index. And I know there are some think tanks that are, are, are building these various indicators. And you put the two lists together, you will find that countries that are more, have a higher degree of gender equality are also countries that tend to be more peaceful, not only between each other, but also within, within those countries. And so, if we can agree that this is the state of relations and it is a goal, then I think we should also be placing women or involving women on various different levels of international relations and also uh, trying to diversify uh, the current definition of what diplomacy means uh, by uh, including many more non-state actors in the process.